The Edmonton Oilers come out in a big way in Winnipeg, taking a 3-0 victory in a potential first-round matchup against the Jets, uh, which we might see in just over a month's time. Welcome to the Oilers TV live post-game show. I'm your host, Tony Barr. Thank you for making us a part of your evening. The puck drop was a little earlier than expected. Uh, as we knew, uh, the schedule changes were going to be coming. Uh, so with no hockey night in Canada night game, they bumped up the the puck drop time from 8 p.m. Mountain to 5 p.m. Mountain. So three hours ahead, but that didn't matter because the Oilers put three goals behind the reigning Vezina Trophy winner, Connor Hellebuck. The Oilers improved to 26-15-2 and two on the season, 54 points, which is now just uh, four points back. Sorry, I apologize. Three points back of the Winnipeg Jets with two games in hand. Of course, the Oilers uh, were scheduled to play the Vancouver Canucks twice this week. And then once uh, following the schedule change, of course, uh, they were not ready to go. The Vancouver Canucks will return to the uh, return to the ice against the Toronto Maple Leafs on Sunday. I'm just trying to keep an eye on, on which players we'll be hearing from tonight. It uh, doesn't look like we've got confirmation on that, but as soon as the players are available at the Bell MTS place, we will be sure to go down there for their media availabilities. The Oilers power play coming through in a big way. Last year, uh, the highest single season mark in franchise history, 30.3%. Uh, so far this year, not too far off, 26.7% coming into tonight, but then they capitalize on two of six power play opportunities, including goals from Tyson Berry and Alex Chase. Now, sandwiched in between Barry and Chason was Jesse Pogliarvi. He had one goal in his previous 10 games coming into tonight, but he picks up his 10th of the season. And I know last week, uh, a lot of Oilers fans were happy because the over-under set for Jesse Pogliarvi to begin the season was at eight and a half goals. He is now in double-digit figures this season. Tyson Berry had a goal and assist, including a sixth of the season. Uh, Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl combined for four points. They, of course, played on the same line tonight with Jesse Pogliarvi. Uh, I'm trying to see... It looks like one of Draisaitl's assists came on the power play. And so did Connor McDavid. So one even strength point and one power play point for both McDavid and Dreisaitl. Uh, Chase on with the seventh. Uh, that was the, the dagger, as Harnarayan Singh called it on Hockey Night in Canada. And Kyler Yamamoto also picking up a lone assist. But whenever there's a lengthy layoff for a hockey team, it's the age-old question, rust, sorry, rest versus rust. And tonight, the Oilers certainly look rested tonight, beginning with their goaltender, number 41, Mike Smith, picking up his 15th victory of the season. He now improves to 15-4-2, and, and he's 6-1-2 in his last nine games, 9-2-2 nine, two two in his last 13. It also was his third shutout of the season. So hang tight. We're going to wait and see who we're going to be hearing from. It looks like Connor McDavid and Mike Smith will be speaking, and of course, head coach Dave Tippett. As soon as they're available at the Bell MTS place, we'll be sure to get you there. Stay tuned. Right corner in front. Red shot score. That's David, and if you have questions, please use the raise hand function. Start with Brian Rashog, TSN. Hey, Connor. Um, in listening to guys talk today, uh, and even Dave Tippett, you know, in terms of what you guys were expecting from yourselves coming into tonight after the, the delay, um, I don't know, it seemed like you hoped the energy would be there, but necessarily weren't 100% sure. What did you think of the way the group came out after the layoff? You know what? I, did, I, I thought our first period was... Uh, was just okay. I think, uh, 
you know, we were kind of getting our feet going again. I thought uh, that's made it a great job early on kind of holding us in and, and, you know, we had a couple chances and, you know, when you have chances that early and you haven't played in a long time, it's, it's, it can feel a bit awkward. So, um, you know, but their guy made some saves too. So I thought uh, I liked our game as, uh, as we got into the second period and, and, and the third. How important do you think this win could be for your group? Standings aside, I mean, this is a team you could face in the playoffs. This is a team that, you know, you're fighting for better positioning with and, and you beat them soundly like this. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a massive win. Um, you know, anytime you're coming down the stretch and, and you're playing teams ahead of you, you want to you want to beat them and and tighten the gap. So, um, you know, tonight was a big win for that. You know, there's teams uh, teams underneath that are playing well. Um, you know, you look at Calgary; they've they've strung a couple in a row, and um, you know, are making a push. So, um, you know, we can't just uh, just float our way in and in, into the playoffs. Um, you know, we got uh, we got to put a couple wins together. Daniel Nigel Bowman, the Athletic. You guys as a team had all, had a ton of chances uh, the first two periods against Connor Hellebuck, who was only one nothing heading into the third, but you guys kept with it. Uh, how much do you think this game should provide the, the template for you guys heading down the final stretch and into the playoffs here? That was a good win. I think, uh, you know, anytime you can replicate a win like tonight, it's going to be a good thing. So, um, you know, we, we should take a lot of uh, a lot of lessons from tonight and, and, uh, and, and, and keep in our game moving forward. Um, Dave Tibbet last Saturday, I mean, last Saturday being what it was, he said, that's a, that's a game you want to burn the, the, the game tape. Is tonight the one that you, you bookmark or, or what have you and, and uh, watch over and over again to, to take lessons from, you think? Yeah, I think, you know, like I said earlier, there's lots of good things that happened tonight. I thought, uh, I thought up and down through, throughout our lineup was, uh, you know, everyone was solid. You know, guys were creating chances. Um, you, know, you look at what Nye did, uh, using his speed and creating, uh, a, you know, a power play, and you know that ends up being the game-winning goal. So, you know, those things are massive uh, throughout a throughout a game, and especially a tight checking one like uh, like they are going to be through down the stretch and into the playoffs. Mark Spector, Sportsnet. Connor, for your RV's goal, you and Leon, uh, you were grinding it out along the boards, both of you, you know, battling guys, getting cross-checked, a couple of offensive zone turnovers. That, that's not a, uh, those aren't plays that you and, and Leon always made, but now you're both real good at it and it's creating offense. Is that a, you know, is that a growth in your game? Is that something that an older player figures out how to do? What is that? Sorry, you cut out there for a sec. You're talking about um, battling for chances? Yeah, yeah, like in the Pugliarvi goal, right? You and Leon both battled and battled. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, you, you got to battle out there um, in the D zone especially, but, you know, I think uh, a lot of times when you get into the offensive zone, you can take the foot off the gas and, and you think it's going to be easy, but, you know, you got to think, uh, you know, they're in the D zone and, and battling just as hard. So, you know, you got to outwork guys sometimes and and, uh, and work for your chances. I thought, you know, we did a good job of that tonight and and, uh, and just did a good job of staying open and, and putting, a, putting away uh, a good chance there. So the coaching staff talked about, you know, you had some practices and Dave was really big on this last 14 games. We got to establish some things in our game. I'm sure they coached the heck out of you the last few days. And then you come out and play a complete game like this all the way through. That's got to be a big confidence builder in everybody that, you know, the system works when, when you use it properly. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, anytime you have a couple of days off, you can kind of regroup and, and look at your game and, and, uh, and tweak the things that uh, need to be tweaked and, and build on the things that you like. And, and I thought, uh, you know, Tip and the coaching staff did a good job of that this week. I thought the players did a good job of buying in and practice and, and working hard and just keeping ourselves ready and and uh, and coming out and, and getting uh, getting rewarded for it. Thank you, Derek Van Dees, Post Media. Hey, Connor. Um, just back to Jesse here. I, he he hadn't been scoring a lot of goals lately, but how big was this goal for him? And, and what else had he been doing uh, on that line if he wasn't scoring? Well, he obviously works hard, um, you know, and he keeps pucks alive. He's a big man. He gets in on the four check and, um, you know, he's got a long reach and, and he uses it to, to kind of poke puck, poke uh, pucks and, um, you know, give us a chance to, to four check them back. So, um, you know, he's definitely a, a, a good player and it hasn't been going in for him, but, you know, it doesn't mean uh, he hasn't had his looks. So, you know, good for him to, uh, to pot one tonight. And chase on on the power play, getting that tip, that that was big for him too. What does he provide at that front net 
net front presence for you guys on that power play? Well, I think you can almost credit them for two goals. I think, uh, you know, Tice obviously has a great shot back there, but, you know, I'm not sure that goes in without Chaser being a big man in front. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that's you know, just as good as scoring a goal. So, um, you don't see it on the stat line, but, you know, that's a massive play for us. And then obviously uh, the third one there tipping it in, you know, shows his, uh, his good hands for a big man. Your maths and post media. Uh, Connor, you talked about the shots from uh, Barry. It, it seemed to me that that because Winnipeg was maybe trying to cut across, cut away that pass from yourself over to Leon, you had to get the puck back to the point, and you know that opens things up too with the shot from the point because the Jets can't just watch Leon. Is or am I? Is that too simplistic? No, I think you're bang on there. Um, you know, the Jets' kill is 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 probably a little more passive than than the ones we usually see. Um, you know, they don't extend their forwards, so um, you know it's tough to kind of get underneath them and, and make plays. So when you're doing that, you gotta you gotta stay above them and and, and pass it above them and, and shoot pucks. And you know, I think Leo had you know five good looks from from that one side, and and uh, and Tice had a couple of good looks from up there. So. You know, we're a power play that's going to take what you give us, and, and that's what they wanted to give us. So, um, you know, I thought, uh, you know, we did, did a good job capitalizing. And one other question. When uh, Nugent Hopkins got hurt and wasn't going to play, most of us thought they'd split up the line and put Leon back at center. And Dave Tippett said, no, I still kind of like that line with you and, and, and Leon together. You know, uh, are you, were you hoping that you know that you stay together or do you just figure because like, you're playing the jets and they got you know a bigger center group second and third line that's just what i was wondering if it might split yeah down. yeah i mean they got uh you know they're they're as, as deep up front as as any team around the league so um you know they're a tough matchup for any team but you know when you're missing a player like nuge it's obviously especially tough but i thought uh i thought all four lines um you know, did a great job especially the the you know two, three, and four, I thought they did an amazing job of, of keeping momentum, um, you know, limiting their chances, um, creating their, their own chances and drawing penalties. I thought, uh, I thought they did an amazing job. Um, you know, as for playing with Leo, I obviously love it. It's something that uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So anytime you get to keep doing that, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's fun. Thank you. This concludes Connor McDavid's the availability. <laughs> Please use the raise hand function. Start with Daniel Legion Bowman, the athletic. Hi, Mike. Uh, a lot was uh, talked about coming into this game, just how you guys would uh, would fare after such a long layoff. I mean, how did you go, how did you think your team played in front of you tonight? I thought we did a lot of good things tonight. I thought we. Uh... We started. We were we were okay in the first. Did did some good things. Had some actually had some chances, and then we just kind of built the game. Uh, second and third just got better and better. Got our legs underneath us and uh, did some really good things tonight. Really good things. A lot of things that we've been talking about the last few days in practice uh, carried over into the game. And um, I mean, credit to the group. We we uh, we've had a little bit of a layoff here. Um, that's never easy to come into a game like that, um, especially when a team's been kind of humming around here. So. Um, you know, real impressed with how we hound ourselves tonight. The kind of the defensive effort in front of you tonight, I imagine that's that makes tonight's effort a little little easier for you. What did you like about the, the, the group, you know, in front of you, especially in your, in your own zone? Yeah, very connected, very connected. I think we've been talking about that. I don't mean to beat a dead horse here, but uh, we've been talking about a lot of these things this, this last week. And um, it's nice when it, you know, it gets talked about and then you practice it and then it carries over into the game. It shows, you know, what we're building here is 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 something worth noting and, and you know, guys have really grasped onto 
you know, playing important hockey games, and that's what it's going to take to, to win the playoffs. Mark Spector, Sportsnet. <clears throat> Three nothing with the goalie pull. Does that prime Mike Smith take a shot at a goal territory? Yep. <laughs> That's it. It's right there. <laughs> uh, so you touched on on Tippett and the coaching and what you did last week. You've been on a lot of teams, and you've probably been in a lot of situations where coaches get some practice days and they drill down and they try to make a point right and they teach you this, you know, work the system and all that stuff. I don't know if it always comes out like that, but when all that process happens and then you come out and play this, you know, I'm not saying a perfect game, but a really, really well-rounded game. Does that make everyone just believe that, okay, you know, we got this thing works, right? This, this system, this coach, this roster, it's working. Yeah, for sure. And let's, let's make one thing clear. I don't think there's such a thing as a perfect game spec. So um, you want to limit the mistakes that end up costing you, you know, points. And I think tonight we did so many good things that it made up for the little mistakes that we might have made. And and the ones that we did made, they were, you know, they were covered up by, you know, help from other players on the, on the ice. And that's that's one thing that we've, you know, been talking about is is trying to build a playoff, trying to build a playoff more style of a game that's going to withstand, you know, getting into the the deep rounds and when it really matters. So I think it's it's just, uh, we want to build that. It's, it's not something that you just flick on and off. It's something that is built. And, uh, um, you know, the, the, the team put in a tremendous amount of work this week. Uh, we had three real hard practices and and it was nice to, to get rewarded for that hard work into a game like that where, you know, that's a, that's a good hockey team. That's a good hockey team. And, and I thought we played, played real solid to, to earn those two points. Derek Rendiz, Post Media. Hey Mike, uh, congrats on the shutout. Um, just want to ask you, you, that, you, you're right, the Jets are a good hockey team and you guys are 5-2 and two against them this year. What is it about them that brings out the best in you guys? They're just a team you can't, you can't have an off night with. You know, they, they have four lines that they can roll. Uh, you know, they're a big squad that comes at you. Um, their top two lines are, you know, highly skilled. Uh, can you know can score if you you give them room. So I think uh, you know you look at their roster and it's it's uh, it's a team that you just you can't afford to have an off night. And I think that's that's been something that you know we've talked about through the course of the season against the squad. And we know it's going to be a close game. You know it's it's always been a close game against the Jets, and that's the way it's going to be down the stretch here. So what better way to prepare for the real games and to, to play, you know, good teams like that. Saying that, how important is it to maybe try and surpass them in the standings so if you do meet them, you will have the home ice advantage? Yeah, obviously you want to finish, you know, as high in the standings as you can. Um, more importantly, we're just, we're building something here. We're, we're building for a, something bigger than a regular season win. So, um, are these wins nice and important? Obviously, yeah, they're huge. Um, but this team, we've talked about it all season long. We're, we're building, you know, for the most important games, and that's the playoff hockey games. And uh, you know, I've I've mentioned it many times. It's not a switch you flick on and off. It's it's something that you you earn and you build throughout the course of the season. This team's doing that right now, and we want to focus on continuing to do that. You know, for the rest of the season leading into the the playoffs. Jason Greger, TSN 1260. Uh, Mike, earlier today you mentioned how you know you're, you're more structured in your preparation as you've gotten you're older. You have a routine, and that you didn't think the week off would bother you at all, and, and clearly it didn't. When you compare that to a younger Mike Smith, is that more of like a mental uh, routine, or is it all physical for you just to get yourself ready? It's both, but it's uh, it's a lot mental. It's a lot mental. It's. Uh, you know, it's kind of staying in the moment and not getting too far ahead, not worrying about what's already been done is, is gone and over with. So it's really about staying as composed as possible, um, you know, worrying about things I can control and uh, making sure I'm doing the right things in practice and off the ice to give myself the best chance to play well. And I think it's just been an, an ongoing thing that I've I've done throughout the course of my career. But this year in general, I've really dialed that in and, and uh, really 
made a note to making a real important part of my uh, my preparation this year. You know, I have, my family's not in town, so I have no excuse that there's there's distractions at home. So obviously, I'm missing them, but um, I have one one thing on my mind right now. I wanted to ask you that because I know as, as a father of young kids that that's got to be excruciating not seeing them, especially because your boys are really old enough to know what dad does and you have them around the room lots. How has that changed? Like has, has as, as much as just not seeing your kids, whoever you are as a father, but ha has there been like a, a negative at all, you know, for that? You mentioned maybe you don't have distraction, but sometimes having kids is a great distraction because they don't care about the games maybe as much as you do. Yeah, I mean, I, I said that, that that's, that's not true. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I miss them every day. I think I've I've seen them twice throughout the course of the season, and um, you know it's it's been difficult. Obviously, you go home from the rink and you, you you have four beautiful kids that that give you a hug no matter if you won or lost the game, and no matter how how well you or how bad you played. So, I think um, you know I'm fortunate to be in this position and, and to be playing in the game I love to play. And, uh, you know, it was just a situation that they were better off to stay where they were and be in school and sports and, and make their life a lot easier than, you know, than bring them here and be locked up and not be able to do much. So I think uh, my wife's done an unbelievable job to keep the house in order as much as possible and um, obviously couldn't be doing what I do without the support of her and the family. So obviously that's something that's special and I miss them every day, but this is one season and hopefully it doesn't linger on more than this. Oh, question, Jim Matheson, Post Media. Uh, Mike, all three of your shutouts this year, three nothing, all on the road. Uh, tonight it looked like the Jets might've got one chance on you where they didn't get two. There were no major scrambles in front of the net. Was that, was that, was that always an easier night for a goaltender when he's not having to dive across the crease to make rebounds? It's well said. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, you nailed it. I think, uh, I mean, that's, that's just a lot of credit to our D in front. I think that it's, they've been working extremely hard about, you know, boxing out, blocking shots, taking sticks, all the little things that get talked about every single season. And, I'm not sure our D get enough credit for the work that they've put in this year and in front of the goaltenders. So um, guys are battling out there and that's what it's going to take to get where we want to go. So, you know, credit to the D in front of me for, for battling like warriors out there. Guys are putting their bodies on the line and blocking shots and it's not easy. So credit to the D. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes Mike Smith's media availability. Please stay tuned for Dave Tippett. Daniel Ingram Bowling, The Athletic. Hi, Dave. Um, there was a lot of curiosity about uh, how your team would perform after the, the week off. Um, your assessment uh, uh, as to how they did? I thought we played well. I thought we had people right through our lineup play well. Um, you know, I was I felt good about our group this morning. The last few days, we've had uh, we've had good energy. There's you know a real positive feeling around our group. Uh, they were anxious to play, which is a good sign. And um, you know, we got a chance to some 
some good practice time in and uh, work on our game a little bit. And I thought, you know, we came out tonight and, and we played a solid game. Uh, last Saturday being what it was, you, you, you mentioned that, you, you know, you, that's a game tape you probably want to burn and never see again. Is this the one, though, that is the opposite? You want to bookmark and, and show your players that this is how you need to play uh, down the stretch and into the playoffs? Well, there's some things I like the way we, you know, there's some things that we talked about during the week that uh, we went out and tried to execute. So that's that's a positive. You know, you're building your game all the time. And, uh, you know, you throw one game out, but in every game there's certain things that, uh, certain things that you like about your group, things to build on, you know, the, the just the, the habits you got to get into and in winning hockey. And, you know, we, we did a pretty good job of it tonight. We, we, were, we were fresh. We had pretty good legs. And... Uh, uh, our power play came through, got us a couple of big goals, but everybody in the lineup, I thought, contributed tonight, and that's what we're looking for. Hi, Andrew Schrag, TSN. Dave, when you make the decision to play Drysaddle and McDavid together against this team, and, and you don't have Nugent Hopkins, um, you know, you're putting a couple of guys in position down the middle to, you know, to have to come through for you. They're playing against pretty good players. Yeah. Uh, how do you think, you know, the, the depth part of your lineups and, and the other centers made out with that challenge? Obviously good, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them there if I didn't think they could do the job. So they came out tonight and did a very good job. Mike Smith was just talking about maybe some of the differences in his, you know, whether it's preparation compared to when he was younger. Seems to be able to just put stuff behind him when it doesn't go well and be more in the moment. What are your observations about a more mature Mike Smith than back in the day? He's finally growing up. <laughs> I've had him since <laughs> had him since when I was was 20 years ago, I think, since I first had him. So, uh, you know, he's, he's just been really solid for us all year. I said it before, like, he's, he's 39 now, but he is one of the best athletes I've ever coached and pure athletes, and uh, he keeps himself in phenomenal shape, and he's really a driven guy this year. He's come back with really uh, wants to prove that he still belongs in this league and wants to excel in this league, and... It's a, it's a really a credit to him that he puts so much work into his game because it's, uh, you know, you don't see guys, especially at that age, at some point they get a little tired of putting the work in. He loves putting the work in and he's getting rewarded for it. Eric Van Dees, Post Media. Hi, Dave. Uh, Jesse Pugliarvi hadn't scored a lot in the last 16 games. I think he had two goals. What, what was he doing well that you wanted to keep him up on that line? Four checks well. He's hard on the puck, creates a lot of pucks, loose pucks. He's, uh, he's, his work ethic is, can, you know, is just, he's relentless out there and stays on pucks. And it's good to get him, see him re get rewarded for his work. You know, he's had some opportunities and hasn't gone in for him. So it's good to see him get rewarded tonight. Was there any, any um, thought of, of, of replacing him and, get, and moving him down the lineup, or were you confident that he would kind of bust out of this slump? No, you're always looking to tinker things, but but he's been fine there. Thanks, Dave. Mark Spector, Sportsnet. So you've coached lots of teams and had lots of off bye weeks and stuff. When you you know you get your team for three or four days and you can practice them and and really you know install some things and do a lot of coaching like you did this week. Uh, do they always come out and play as well as they played tonight and, and, you know, I guess execute what you've been showing them the last few days? Does it always go that way or is this rare? Yeah, you know, we didn't, it's not as if we did anything new this week. We just, we just kind of reviewed some stuff that has been in our game all along. And when you have a chance to review some of it, it's, it gets, uh, uh, you know, you kind of get refreshed with it. But uh, our guys, I give them credit. They worked hard all week. We, we talked about this. We have 14 games left before tonight to, uh, to earn a playoff spot and to make sure if we get that spot, we're playing well as we're going in. So there's some things that we really wanted to emphasize this week of, of how we want to play and, you know, the structure really of, of what we want to do. And, um, you know, I thought tonight was a good first step. We came out and we, we played a strong game. And, uh, you know, we found a way to get a win. Now we're going to see if we can build on that for the next game. Uh, McDavid and Dreisaitl on the Pugliarvi the goal, they, they both worked the wall really, really well. They caused some turnovers. They held the puck along the wall. They, they were taking punishment. They kind of looked like the Sedin brothers for a little bit of that shift. <laughs> and uh, finally, the puck comes loose to the right guy and you get a goal. Is that something that, that is that a show, show some maturity in their game? That they're able to, you know, play that kind of game too. 
I think I think they do that all the time, but the media and everybody focuses on the highlight goals that they get, but they do grind out some stuff. You know, they they're uh, they're willing to put the work in, and it's you know that's part of what we talked about this week. You have to recognize it's going to be hard. You know, winning in the playoffs is hard, or winning to get a playoff spot is hard, and there there's not it's not going to be all pretty passes and 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 you know breakaways just you're going to have to work for your goals and our whole team's mindset was like that and and those guys are at the leader of that when they get opportunities when they check well and get opportunities with the puck they can create stuff and that's what happened tonight so that the line was solid all night and they uh, they checked them hard they they you know they were they had a hard matchup against them the first couple of periods but uh, they ended up finding a way to to capitalize and and it was a big goal for us Jason Greger, TSN 1260. Dave, the, the Haas Cahoon Yamamoto line created a lot, but they gave up virtually nothing. Uh, yeah. And they played most of their minutes against the Shifley line. You know, that's a line that has obviously hasn't played a lot together. Um, what did you like about them specifically head to head against Shifley's line tonight? They're smart. They're they're smart with the puck. They work. Haas is, a, Haas is a very intelligent player, a very intelligent player, always in the right spot. I thought that was Yamo's uh, best game in a while, really played well on the wall and stuff. So they're just a smart line. They, they make enough plays where they have the puck enough where it makes the other team chase a little bit, and they're smart defensively. So it was, uh, it was a solid night for them. You've been on the other end, Dave, when you're playing your, your third game in four nights, as the Jets were. I know this year is more condensed. As a coach, do you notice that more? Uh, whether you're either the team playing third and four or you're playing against teams who are playing their third game in four nights. Is it is it more noticeable, the fatigue factor this year? I don't know if it's no more normal. That's that's a hard turnaround any time, any year. So it's uh, I think there's been more of the four on uh, three and fours and four and sixes this year than a normal year. So, but I know, you know, within a normal year, there's, everybody talks about back to backs, but three and fours are, uh, three and fours are a concern for a coach. Your mouth, so Thanks, Dave. Uh, Dave, uh, that to me looks like the best game Joachim Nygaard has played this season. Did you think that? Yeah, it was solid. We're looking for, he's, he's a good four checker. He's got speed. Uh, we're, we're, that's one of the parts of our game. I think we have to try to improve as our four check. And so we, uh, we gave him an opportunity. He hasn't had much opportunity this year just because we've had extra guys around, but we were going to give him the opportunity to step in. And he went in, and he was very solid, drew a penalty, he used his speed, but that line was very good. Shore was solid in the middle, and Cassian, that's the best game he's played in a while. So I like the line, and, and Nygaard certainly did his, did his part on it. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no more questions, this concludes tonight's media availability. And there was uh, Oilers head coach Dave Tippett following the 3-0 victory. Again, the Oilers earning their 26th victory of the season as Mike Smith earns his 15th victory of the season and third shutout. 26 stops for number 41 between the Oilers pipes. He's, he also mentioned uh, that, of course, when it comes to the age-old saying, uh, rest versus rust, they certainly look rested and connected throughout the game. Certainly a complete effort and two valuable points in the Scotia North Division. Again, the Oilers are now three points back of the Winnipeg Jets for second place in the Scotia North Division with two games in hand. The Oilers will return home for two games against the Montreal Canadiens next week, Monday and Wednesday. Then they'll have four days off, well, not days off, with practice days in between before making their way back out to Central Canada and taking on the Jets for two more times, the final two times, as the Oilers now lead the season series 5 to two. For my producer, Brock Wood, I'm Tony Barr signing off. Thank you for making Oilers TV live post-game show a part of your evening as we leave you with tonight's highlights. Stay safe, everybody. The stars are ready to go in this one, Greg, and every time they've met this season, they have been very close games between the Jets and the Oilers as we are underway here. Opening face-off drop. McDavid on the ice through the middle. middle. Oh. Over the blue line now. Shifley. Morrissey, Pullman, all alone in the slot, and Mike Smith, a great blocker oh, save there. Around the right. the puck. Dubois, able to find Connor. 
bouncing around there, and Cahoon looking to find Yamamoto. Another chance. Yamamoto in. Great move, but a great save. Through the middle of the seam. And Connor Hellebuck, we just heard Scott Oak talk about him. He stays right with him, drags that pad flat, which is hard to do when you're off balance like that. And he's able to drag it right down the middle. He's here in the first half of the first period. Another one coming up. It's Alex Chason. A deke and Connor Hellebuck read that one all the way. Shot right in front of the Looking net for by Pullman. Couldn't connect. Dry sidle on the counter attack. Cassian to the net. Cassian with the tip. Hellebuck the save. Nurse coming into the zone. Dry sidle with some room on the backhand. Now forehand a shot in Hellebuck. And Adam Larson moving ahead to Nygaard trying to get past Pionk. He may do that. Referee's arm is up though, and another the penalty David. coming up. Moving up, makes a move. Got past Pullman, a shot from Dreisaitl. Another opportunity here as Barry. McDavid now on the far side. Barry, the one-timer, and they score! The Edmonton Oilers with a power play marker to take a one side lead. afterwards, and he has been over on that side most of the game. And Dreisaitl now to the right of your screen. Look at him, Dreisaitl hide away from the traffic. And then the point shot as McDavid sets it up. And Barry with that rocket from the point lets it go through traffic. And I don't think Connor Hellebuck really saw this. You can see him stand up Hellebuck to look for the puck. The minute he stands up, that puck is now on its way and he never gets set. And the Edmonton Oilers here on the power play get the lead. Tyson Barry now just three points shy of matching his oh. total from all the Jets now coming back the other way. Kyle Connor moving in, looking for Shifley, shoots, and Mike Smith got a piece of that. Fourth line, Trevor Lewis looking for some room. Logan Stanley tees it up, and Mike Smith Came up, and there's a couple of fine, fine defensive plays. Angling, good stick. Look, makes and a move, got past Pullman. Dry sidle. Playing a patient game here. Here's a chance, and they score. Top shelf. Yes, a Puliarvi and the Oilers have a 2-0 lead. And you'll see the running around start. Morris here goes to his check. No problem there. Pullman now goes to the corner. And now both Edmonton Oilers go to the puck carriers. Connor was in front, and he decides to chase behind the net. Not a good idea, especially when Connor McDavid has the puck behind the net. Finds Puliarvi with a perfect pass. No look pass up over top. Then the end result, Billy Arby gets the gift. His and career, boy, has he ever played great this year. Changing of his jersey number from 98 to 13 as well. Not saying that has a lot to do with it or, or anything, but here's a shot and a score again on the power play to take a 3-0 lead against the Jets. And I believe this was tipped after. I was on him early for taking one a little bit early in a power play, and there is the redirect right in front of the net by Chason. Right there, and no chance for Connor Hellebuck. And there is the dagger that the Edmonton Oilers were looking for after Ehlers takes a... Ethan Bear back to Jones, and dying seconds now. And here we go, the horn will sound. 3-0 final score. The Edmonton Oilers defeat the Winnipeg Jets. It is the third shutout of the season for Mike Smith, his 42nd in his career, and the second one.